Part two of this presentation on local revenue for schools will discuss property valuation, assessed value, and millage. Well, when we start getting into the, the idea of property tax, we've got to start getting into some more of the terminologies, okay? And most of these terminologies are new to you, uh, which we understand, okay? Uh, the first one is true market value or the selling price of the house, of the real property, the selling price. Now what you're going to find is the selling price has a less effect on taxes in general than a couple of other important variables. Stop for a second, another term that I want you to get a, a grasp for, okay? This is called valuation. If we took all of the real property, and if we were receiving money for tangible personal property, if we were receiving tax for anything of value, that is called the district's valuation. That's their valuation, what it is valued at. The concept we want to get across to you is if we look at valuation per pupil, VPP, that is a, an important concept in considering the wealth of a district, okay? And think of it in these terms. If you lived in a very wealthy suburb that had huge industrial plant, had a lot of businesses, a lot of residents, those, that area, I always like to use Worthington, uh, suburb of Columbus as an example. You put all of that property together and you, and, and for my example here, that's District A, and it has $50 million of value, property value. Well, simple little formula. You take the valuation, you divide it by the number of students, and that gives you the valuation per pupil. And you see District A has $10,000 per pupil in valuation, okay? Take a low wealth, low valued district, okay? Uh, in this particular case, uh, it really isn't a low valued district because it has the exact same value as District A, but it is in a large metropolitan area. There are many, many more students. So although it has the exact same valuation, it has more students, which drives the value per pupil down. We would say that this District B is a low value district, and District A is a high value district. And of course, valuation, as you will learn, not only plays an important part in local revenue, it also plays a part in state revenue. Uh, whether you're in uh, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, or Ohio, uh, and we'll find that out in a couple of weeks, how that how that plays on there. As we said, District A much much higher in wealth. Once again, you know, we're, we're, we're talking you through the important terms of local school uh, resources or revenue, okay? Assessed value, assessed value. Well, assessed value is the property of a district that is assessed. We'll get to what assessment means here in a moment, but assessed value is a key component of determining local revenue, okay? The assessed value. And to find out how much money you will be spending, <coughs> you take your assessed value of your home, you multiply it by the mills that are being asked as an initial levy or as a renewed levy or issued to you in Pennsylvania, okay? Because we don't, we're not voting in Pennsylvania. You take that assessed value, multiply it by the mills or the millage, and 
that equals the taxes that you owe. Okay? That will that will be the taxes that you owe. Basic uh, equation that you have, that you have to, to uh, understand in order to understand local school resources. Okay. So, what's my home's value? What is its assessed value? Okay. If the true market value of a home is $100,000, in Ohio, 35% is assessed. So the assessed value is only $35,000. In West Virginia, it's 60% is the assessed value, statewide, statewide. Doesn't matter where you live in West Virginia, it's 60% on uh, real estate. It's 35% statewide. Pennsylvania, it is not statewide. It is a local decision as to what the assessed value of your home is going to be worth. Okay? One of the things that individuals who have to sell. Uh, levies to individuals is to get them to understand this concept. Have any of you worked on levy campaigns? No. One of the things I would suggest to you, if you got an opportunity, you need to work on a levy campaign because it will help you understand school finance to say the least because somebody has to explain how it all functions. Those are the assessed values in the three states as we mentioned. And in Pennsylvania, I, I, I've discovered that many of the counties do assess it at 100%. Uh, I found one that was what, at 91.3%. Uh, but I do understand that there are others that are lower than that as well. So, we, I hope you understand assessed value, okay? Get that concept, okay? The next concept, the second part of the variable, of that equation is millage, okay? And millage is just a, a factor, uh, a, a number, if you will, and it equals one-tenth of a cent, or point zero zero one, okay? That's what a mill, and, and mill by itself means one thousandth, if you will. So one-tenth of one percent, or point zero zero one. So, if a school district is levying 15 mills in Pennsylvania, then they would take their assessed value of all the property, they would multiply it by 0 .015, and that would tell them how much money is being collected. For you folks, if you want to figure out how much uh, you are paying in your property tax as a base figure, as a base figure, because we're going to get to that homestead stuff uh, in a few minutes, uh, you would take that assessed value, and if the school district is telling you that they want to pass 15 mills, then you take that assessed value of your home, which is 35% of the true market value, you multiply it times 0 0.015, and that will give you a base figure mm -hmm. as to how much you will be paying. Okay? 25 mils is 0 0.025. Okay? We're going to have some um, problems for you to do for next week. So, as we said, you take your assessed value, $100,000 home in Ohio is assessed 35,000, 25 mils, $875 tax is what that's the initial amount that you would be paying. This concludes part two of Local Revenue Sources.